So, is it too late to buy Tesla stock? Has the stock peaked? Will we see a pullback? Let's discuss in this video. Okay, so in my previous video, I promised I'd make a video talking about Tesla stock and is the price too high right now? Seeing as Tesla makes up about 30% of my portfolio, uh, you can see the other stocks that make up uh, my portfolio right here in that video. But I said I'd make a video on it because I do keep quite a close eye on the stock. So let me share my screen with you and we'll take a look at the stock. So first of all, I'm on TradingView here. It's a free website that I definitely recommend checking out. It has a live charts of all the stocks you could want on here and lots of other good information as well. So that's what we'll be using for this video today. Okay, so as of right now, the 21st of January, Tesla stock price is $850.45. Looks a little bit down in the pre-market, but I wouldn't take that as an indication of anything. Okay, so let's see how Tesla stock has acted over the past couple of months to give us a bit of context how we are at the prices we're at today. So let's go ahead and see what it was at exactly one month ago on the 21st of December, 2020. Okay, so we can see here it was about the about the 640 level, so approximately $200 from the level that it is at now. And let's go back one month further than that as well. We'll see November. Okay, about this region here. So we're looking at probably about just around the 500 level there. So it's had quite a run up, maybe $350 in a short space of two months, which is pretty astronomical. Okay, so now let's look at some of the financials. So we can see Tesla currently has a market cap of 806 billion. This is directly tied to the stock price. So the higher the stock price goes, the higher the market cap goes, and the richer Elon Musk gets on paper anyway. And we can also see this metric here, which is the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio. So this is currently at 1,600, which is a really, really high PE ratio. But we'll get into why we won't use this metric exactly to value Tesla. Okay, so I've just pulled up GM, so General Motors on TradingView as well, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that stock. It's another vehicle maker. It's a legacy vehicle maker, so they make ICE vehicles, internal combustion engines, so just your, your normal petrol and diesel cars. Um, trying to get into the uh, EV space now, along with every other automaker pretty much. We're just going to use them as a comparison to get some of the kind of differences between Tesla and another automaker in terms of market cap and PE ratio as well. So currently the stock is trading at about $55. Again, it doesn't really matter what the stock is trading at, it's about the, the market cap. So for example, this could be $800, but it wouldn't still have the same market cap um, that Tesla does. Okay, so taking a look at the market cap of GM here, we can see it's 80 billion. So just to remind you guys, it's 806 billion for Tesla and 80 billion for uh, GM, so quite a difference there. We can also see the PE ratio is substantially less as well. So their price to earnings ratio is at about 24, whereas Tesla was 1,600. So I've just finished reading this book called The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Now, in his time, he was considered one of the best investors around, and he was also the mentor to Warren Buffett as well, so he definitely knows his stuff. But if he's seen a PE ratio of 1,600, I am positive he would have fallen off his chair and not gone near that stock with a stick. But while traditional valuation methods may still work in the market, it is a little bit more difficult to apply them in this current market right here. Because going off the kind of things that you learn in this book, you just wouldn't go near a stock like Tesla and I wouldn't have had most of the gains that I've had so far in my portfolio. So we do have to take that with a little grain of salt as well, that there are some kind of, you kind of have to read the market as it is right now. You can't always go with this kind of valuation method of looking for a low PE ratio. I think in that book, it kind of says around anything around the, 13 to 16 PE ratio, PE ratio range is a good value stock and one that you could feel pretty safe putting your money in. But when you look at something like 1600 PE ratio, obviously that would be would be a bit big deterrent. So basically what I'm saying is for me anyway, I don't directly go off like the PE ratio and all that when it comes to Tesla because I just don't think it's a good way of valuing Tesla right now. And if I did listen to just that, as I said, I probably wouldn't have even invested in the stock in the first place. So what has happened to Tesla in the past couple of months that's made it have such a big run up? Well, first of all, it was added to the S&P 500. Currently right now, it makes up 1.69% of the S&P 500. Now, for those of you that don't know, the S&P 500 is an index which tracks the top 500 companies in the US. And getting added to that is a pretty big deal because a lot of investors take a passive strategy where they basically just put money into the S&P 500. I know that's what Warren Buffett recommends as well. Just put your money into an index fund and forget about it. And the S&P 500 is the location for most people's money. So that means every time someone is investing $100 into the S&P 500, $1.69 of that goes to Tesla. So it's a lot of new money coming into Tesla and that's definitely had something to do with the price being driven up. 
Now, it was quite a unique circumstance that Tesla got added to the S&P 500 as it already had a massive market cap when it joined. The only kind of stock that it could be compared to was Yahoo when that joined the S&P 500 in 1999. But again, they're completely different time zones and they're completely different industries as well. So it is hard to take from that. But essentially what happened with Yahoo was there was a big spike but then the stock kind of leveled back out again. And that is potentially something we could see with Tesla here. So let's just jump back to the comparison between GM and Tesla as well. So if we're just looking at the two companies at face value, we would see Tesla just delivered 500,000, just under 500,000 vehicles in 2020, which was very, very good considering it was a pandemic this year. And for two months of the year, their main gigafactory was shut down, the main place that they produce cars. But then we also have GM who have produced just so many, so much more cars. Than Tesla. But again, we can't look at it at just that comparison. If we were looking at just that, we'd obviously choose GM as the better company. So it's important to look at the direction of the two companies. So obviously Tesla was made with the future in mind and we're kind of coming into that future now of the whole EV revolution. A lot of electric vehicles, a lot of countries trying to get down their carbon emissions. So they're gonna be really bringing out a lot of incentives for electric vehicles. And I believe China wants to sell only electric vehicles by the year 2030. So just before we get into what I'm doing with Tesla at this price, let's just cover a couple of more very quick points on Tesla. So Tesla is a technology electric vehicle company. It's an energy company and possibly an insurance company that's in the works at the minute where they'll provide their own insurance for Tesla users. I believe Tesla are confident their energy business can rival their electric vehicle business as well. So there's a lot more room to grow for this company. If we look at this chart that's on the screen right here, we can see where we are right now. And then we can see how much room Tesla has to grow in the next couple of years. And I'll take that into consideration when talking about my, what I'm doing with the stock right now. And as I briefly mentioned there, other legacy automakers have a lot of ground to cover on Tesla. I mean, Tesla is just so far ahead of the competition in terms of their battery technology, their autonomous driving technology, their autonomous driving data. They have so many millions and millions of miles of people driving their cars to make their automated uh, driving much better because obviously this is a data-driven kind of technology. So the more information they can get from people on the actual roads, the better their self-driving will become. And I've no doubt in the near future that we'll have really, really good full self-driving technology from Tesla and potentially the robo taxis as well. So that's also another stream of income that Tesla could generate. But I mean, you'd really need to spend a lot of time just on, in one video talking about all the different avenues Tesla has. We're not going to do that in this video. Now we're just going to get into the prices as they are now and what I'm currently doing with the stock and what I kind of foresee happening. So the price of $850, is it too expensive? Well, yes and no. Around the middle of 2020, I had kind of a price target for at the end of 2021, and that was of $840. And as you can see, it's already surpassed that by 12 months. So I was quite a bit out there, but who knows, it may even finish 2021 at these levels. We just don't know. But as I pointed out, I think Tesla is a really great company and I'm definitely bullish on it. So if you're investing for the long term, I definitely would say Tesla isn't a bad buy right now. Will it go down next week or next month? Maybe, possibly, most likely. But in two years time, will it be worth more than 850 per share? I believe it will. Again, I just want to remind everybody that this video is for entertainment purposes only and I definitely recommend doing all of your own research before you buy into any of these stocks. And if you need it, seek out the help of a financial advisor. So here's my approach to Tesla at the minute. So I'm just gonna read this off here. So sorry for looking down, but so at the current levels, I'm just gonna keep buying as part of my pie. So I covered off my pie in my first video on my channel here. And basically what I have is Tesla at 30% in that pie. So every time I put in hundred euro, 30 of that will go to Tesla. And I'm fine doing that at these current prices. I'm a long-term investor, so I believe that in the future, the price of Tesla will be higher. So even if I buy it now at these levels and it drops a bit, I'm confident that in the future, it will be worth more again. So I won't exactly lose money there. So it pulls back to the 780 range. I'll actually look at buying some outside my pie, maybe pick up one or two shares outside my pie so I wouldn't be investing the 100 into the pie like I previously would. Now I would just buy Tesla individually. Then if it drops to below the 680 range, I'll actually sell some of my other stocks, maybe some of my smaller positions and free up more money to be able to put into Tesla. And if it drops anything below there, I may have to look at selling everything I own and putting it into Tesla. So I'm definitely bullish about the company. So that'll wrap it up for this video. That's what I'm doing with Tesla stock and they're my current thoughts on it. If you have any other opinions or you agree with me or disagree with me, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe give me your price target for Tesla for the next six months or for the end of the year. If you could take a second to drop a like on this video, that'd be great. And if you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe as well for future content.